Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the health and wellness spot. This is Dr. Lewis. Again, this is another video under the series of videos that are coming to you uh, regarding the gut microbiota and gut microbiome, how to maintain them and uh, what functions they play in our day-to-day -day activities and in our body immunity. So we've realized that microorganisms that are inside and on our bodies play a very important role and they exist there uh, in a symbiotic relationship. We depend on them and they also depend on us. So we give them shelter and some food and they give us vitamin and immunity. And also they recover, they help us recover from chronic conditions like diabetes and obesity. And they are very important. Again, research is still going on about uh, on how to uh, relate this with uh, different conditions and diseases like cancer, colon cancer, like uh, colitis, like inflammatory bowel syndrome and nervous uh, CNS conditions like Alzheimer's and also depression and anxiety. So what do these microorganisms in your stomach or in your body play uh, in relation to different diseases? So we'll handle that again in another video. But today we're just talking about how to maintain this ratio of good and bad bacteria in your system. Remember we have both good and bad bacteria and good bacteria overwhelm the bad bacteria and therefore they keep them in check okay so in your stomach we have good and bad bacteria everywhere in your gut on your skin and what they do is they basically keep your bad bacteria in check and also provide immunity for you they also help you break down food substances to give you uh, uh, different nutrients they also help in that nutrient absorption like vitamins so they are very important when they are there and also remember uh, for instance like h pylori if, if your system is okay and your microbiota are balanced, then H. pylori will never be a problem to you. How do you maintain this gut microbiota? And it's as simple as what you eat. Remember, we talked about cravings in one video and we said that if you consume more carbohydrates, then you alter the population of bacteria in your stomach or in your gut because now you will shift the attention of uh, this bacteria to just high population of those that totally consume carbohydrates will help you break down carbohydrates. So whatever you eat determines their population uh, in your gut. And therefore it's very important that you take care of what you eat so that you can help your body system to balance these uh, microbes. Because again, remember if you get to a place where you're altering your stomach acid and therefore you have uh, a different type of microbes growing in the stomach, that is a problem because all these bacteria grow under different conditions. And therefore, they're not only bacteria, we have bacteria, fungi, and even viruses. And therefore, we want all of them to strictly stay or stick to where they, uh, they are well best. So we don't want colon bacteria to get access into the a small intestine and start causing you the SIBO. Okay, and also don't want uh, bacteria from the stomach to flow into your uh, small intestines and start causing you those bloating and indigestion. So basically, what do you do to maintain this ratio of bad and good bacteria in your stomach and therefore recover from different conditions and also maintain the homeostasis within your body? Number one is eliminate sugar. When I mention the word sugar, I'm totally saying uh, carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates for that matter. So remember, if you consume sugar, be it fruit sugar, honey sugar, uh, be it uh, carbohydrates, processed foods, what you're doing is you're encouraging your body to produce more of the bacteria that break down carbohydrates. Okay, and remember, in fiber, for example, fiber, we have those bacteria that are based in the large intestines that break down the fiber that is indigestible so that they help you get those uh, short-chain fatty acids that are very beneficial to you. However, if you continue eating sugar and simple carbohydrates, what you're doing is you're encouraging your gut to produce bacteria that break down uh, that sugar, and therefore your stomach will be filled with the population of bacteria that break down sugar. And that is a problem because they'll send you into those sugar cravings all the time. And therefore, you'll never recover from chronic conditions like diabetes, insulin resistance, and obesity. But two is avoid grains. Now, when I say grains, I'm saying most grains. Because the grains, are, there's a video we did about anti-nutrients. And grains have high content of anti-nutrients. These are basically uh, components that block absorption of appropriate nutrients. Some of you will tell me that I eat healthy but I'm not losing weight, or I eat healthy, but I'm not adding a healthy weight. The reason is, might be you're, you're eating so much grains, and these grains are anti-nutrients, so they're blocking your absorption of healthy nutrients. Now, remember, plants cannot run away, okay? When they are attacked, 
or when they are under attack, they cannot run away. Human beings can run, animals can run, but plants cannot. And therefore, they develop mechanisms of adaptation. And these mechanisms involve or include formation of uh, highly estrogenic compounds. And those estrogenic compounds are basically the ones that are supposed to control the population of insects and animals, and therefore they will not be attacked. So these estrogenic products basically kill the manhood uh, in, the, in the insects. And therefore, once you kill the manhood in the insects, a good example is like soy, soybeans. They have high content of estrogen, and this estrogen is acting as a contraceptive method, and therefore it will reduce the population of these insects, and therefore it will help these plants or these grains to survive. So anti-nutrients is number one on grains. So they are high in grains. Number two, they're high in starch. So all those grains are high in starch, and starch is a problem to you. Then again, glyphosate and estrogen. So glyphosate is basically from the GMO, and also the herbicides. Food industries and agriculture is always a step ahead. So they use those herbicides and to produce these grains, and therefore we can never know the difference, because again, remember, research that comes out uh, from GMO products and this glyphosate is, is, is a little wanting, is a little scanty, because... It comes from the billionaires who totally uh, carry out this large-scale manufacturing or large-scale uh, production of these uh, grains. And therefore, they'll do anything to make sure that uh, they cover up what they do. So they can never share adequate information about glyphosate and GMO products because they want you to stick to their products and that will put money in their pockets. So nobody cares about your health apart from yourself. And if you fall prey of the media, agriculture and food industry, then you'll never come out from those conditions that you're suffering from. And number three, we have vegetable seed oils. I'm saying vegetable seed oils because most of those seed oils that you're using to cook are labeled vegetable oils. Now that vegetable oil is a marketing strategy. It is aimed at keeping you hooked to these seed oils. Okay? So they are seed oils. They are coming from canola. They are coming from sesame. They are coming from corn, which is basically maize, sunflower and safflower. All these are seed oils, but they are not telling you that these are seed oils. So you'll be lured into buying them thinking they have vegetables. And since you know vegetables are healthy, then you'll go buying them. So they will never tell you it is a seed oil and it's highly purified. So they will never tell you that. They will tell you it's a vegetable oil and you need to buy it and it has 0% cholesterol, even though you need cholesterol for survival. So you have to stay cautious. And that's why we are here to remind you that those vegetable oils that you see are basically seed oils and they're highly are refined and they're highly inflammatory to your gut. Therefore, they'll mess up your stomach environment and they'll mess up the bacteria population in your stomach. Okay? So that is exactly what we are aiming at. So remember, everything that I'm mentioning here is aimed at trying to maintain. the. So if you avoid it, it's aiming to try and help you maintain the gut or the microbiota in your system so that you, you function adequately and appropriately. So avoid seed oils because of that function. Now, those are three. Number four, definitely processed foods. When you walk into that your favorite restaurant and uh, order your favorite burger or you go into a supermarket and, and pick up your favorite snack, it is very intentional that it is it has sugar, it has those flavors and preservatives. And remember, preservatives are basically acting as antibiotics. The reason why we use preservatives is because we want to prevent uh, colonization by bacteria so that we maintain our product on the shelves for the longest period of time. So it is basically an antibiotic and therefore that means it is capable of killing your gut microbiota. So if it kills that, then definitely you'll have an imbalance in your bio, uh, microbiome or microbiota in the stomach or in the gut and that will expose you to different conditions again. Okay. Then number five, zero alcohol. Again, if you realize alcohol is used as a preservative in most products, even drugs. Most drugs use alcohol as a preservative. And therefore, if it is used as a preservative, then again, it's an antibiotic. So alcohol is basically killing the bacteria. Yeah, okay. So you remember also alcohol is used in, uh, as a sanitizer. So basically, it kills the bacteria. And we want this bacteria in your stomach, yeah, even if we have bad and good bacteria. So alcohol and all these, when the processed foods, these preservatives, they are not selective. They just destroy the bacteria. So if at all they could have destroyed the bad bacteria and leave the good bacteria and then okay but however we still need the bad bacteria because uh, they help us balance the ratio and we prevent overgrowth and opportunistic infections so alcohol has to go totally be it beer be it wine any form of alcohol has to go then minimize on antibiotics this is where the problem is now mothers 
you always take your kids to hospital, your children to hospital, or your babies to hospital, and what they are given are antibiotics, even if they have a common cold. These babies, you've messed up their guts using uh, bread, using soda, using sugar, and those seed oils. So you've messed up their system already and the immunity is compromised. Then this child is exposed to flu. And then you take this child to hospital and they are given antibiotics, plus that antihistamine, plus any other drug like uh, anti-fever like paracetamol. So you have a prescription that has antibiotics. And remember, you started your child on, 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 on milk formulas. So your child's immunity is totally compromised. So they get these fevers and they get this common cold. You take them to hospital and they get a prescription that has antibiotics. And you use them faithfully. Some of them, or some of these doctors even write two antibiotics. Okay? I'm not saying that is bad, depending on the condition, but you still have an antibiotic anyway in your prescription. And it's a common cold. That's a waste of time. Because antibiotics are supposed to be indicated for bacterial infection. Some of these common colds are viral infections. So once you, get, you give this child antibiotics, they will heal him miraculously. But what are you doing? You are altering the composition of microbiota. So come to think of it, you have given birth through uh, certain sessions, the CS. Then you start your child because your diets are messed up. So you start your child on milk formulas, which are highly dangerous to the immune of the child. Okay? And then after that, you still go to hospital because your kid's immunity is messed up because of that milk formula and no breast milk. And then you take this child to hospital and they are written, they are given these drugs. These drugs also alter the gut microbiota. Therefore, you're exposing this child more to problems than you're helping this child. And therefore, that, that, that's the reason why your children will always be in hospital with those runny nose. So avoid the misuse of antibiotics. Antibiotics are only supposed to be used for conditions that are basically microbial, um, uh, microorganism caused, basically uh, bacteria. And uh, you need to limit them. Five days is enough. Don't use antibiotics every time. You take this one antibiotic, tomorrow you're in the hospital again taking another antibiotic for this child, and you're messing your child's immunity. Again, women who are on hormonal contraceptives, Hormonal contraceptives totally lower down lower immunity, and once they lower your immunity, then you break down or you cause an effect in this gut microbiome. Also, people who have ulcers and you are on PPIs, omeprazoles, esomeprazoles, pantoprazoles, you are taking them all the time, and these drugs alter the pH of the stomach. That tells you those bacteria that survive in stomach pH, which is acidic, will start dying. Therefore, you'll have problems in digestion and bloating will never go away. And I told you already, these drugs will never help you heal ulcers. Okay, they will always take your money. H. pylori test is a scam, and then PPI is again, and antacids are also a scam because antacids also neutralize your stomach acid. Your stomach acid is supposed to be as concentrated as possible. So if you find yourself trying to mess that stomach acid, just know you're getting in the wrong direction because there are bacteria that survive in the stomach pH, which is acidic, and if you start neutralizing that acid, then you'll encourage basically uh, bacteria that uh, live in basic pH in the stomach. That will be a problem. Then some antibiotics, research has shown that some antibiotics, uh, antidepressants, uh, will destroy your gut microbiome. And remember, we can use this gut microbiome. This is a field that is still under research, but we can tap into it to help you heal depression. So if you use antidepressant, actually antidepressant is not supposed to be used, actually. These are drugs that are just supposed to exploit your pockets because of a disease that already you made it uh, in your head. So antidepressants are supposed to be dropped by all means because they alter, again, gut microbiome. So that is reason number six. Reason number seven is basically what you should consume. Or point number seven is basically what you should consume. Concentrate on high animal fat, eat eggs, eat organ meat in plenty, vegetables which are supposed to be fiber that is supposed to be consumed or broken down by this gut microbiome. And vegetarians here is where we have a problem. Most of the vegetarians is because of uh, religious beliefs. I'm not here to, uh, to question religion, but I'm here to tell you vegetarians are suffering more from chronic conditions because they do not eat meat okay so kindly in this channel if you are a vegetarian uh, it's hard for me to respond to your questions because uh, I'm not a believer in vegetarianism or, or eating vegetables alone I'm a believer in eating meat so eat your meat in plenty then number eight zero sweeteners be it artificial or natural sweeteners drop them totally those people tell me aspartame I know aspartame does not raise your insulin levels. Yes, but why do you need to sweeten your food? That's a question you should be asking yourself. Why are you so addicted to sweet things? So sugar has no replacement. Do not replace sugar with anything. 
enjoy your foods in their natural uh, state so you so that you can fix your dopamine addiction and also you can fix your gut microbiota number nine is chlorine water and even fluoride which is found in your artificial toothpastes your not artificial commercial toothpastes so chlorine water is another antibiotic chlorine is an antibiotic because what we are doing is we are killing bacteria in this water so if you're used to using chlorine to clean in quotes clean your water then you're basically consuming an antibiotic because what it does is kills microbi uh, it kills microorganisms and these microorganisms it is not selective because again if you take chlorine water it will still kill your gut microbiome therefore it will alter your environment in the stomach and your gut another problem so we want to maintain this bacteria uh, in the stomach and in your gut entirely and also in your skin so we want to avoid all those things that kill these microorganisms that are helpful to your immunity and then the last one has to be sanitizing all surfaces again here people fall prey of that uh, soap that is being advertised on tv and all they are saying is it kills 99.9 percent of bacteria that is so uh out of proportion because why would you kill those bacteria yet your immunity relies on those bacteria your children uh, are supposed to be exposed to uh, the, the dust different microorganisms so that their immunity knows how to handle them and becomes uh, uh, more stronger so if you sanitize every surface your child touches and every surface that you touch you are heading into a wrong direction because you're trying to weaken your immunity because it will now be dependent on what you do you want your immunity to learn and to understand and to keep memories of these bacteria so that when they come in it can get to fight them so do not sanitize all the surfaces that you're using do not use that uh, sanitizer everywhere and i'm not supposed to be misquoted for saying we shall not use sanitizers i'm saying do not sanitize every surface that your child touches and that you use because again those microbiome microbacteria that are on those surfaces are the ones that will help you improve your immunity and therefore these are just ways to help you maintain the levels of bacteria in your gut which you totally call human gut microbiota so once you maintain this bacteria in your gut then you will end up avoiding several conditions we already said they play a role in nervous conditions okay cns conditions like depression and uh, uh, lack of sleep they also play a role in alzheimer's disease and parkinson's they also have a role in your gut to prevent you from getting inflammatory bowel condition and crohn's disease and all other functions they also break down food to give you micronutrients and and and, and those minerals and they also help you in absorption so if you alter this concentration of this bacteria or their population then you're basically altering your immunity in general so what you're saying is avoid or maintain this gut microbiome by avoiding these foods and also consuming these ones so that you have an appropriate immunity